Socialism is Painted Black. Um, it's a book uh, that I wrote a long time ago. And uh, the study is a chapter in that book uh, entitled The Task of Revolutionaries and the History of the Movement. And uh, it was from a presentation that I made in, at Oberlin uh, College, is it Oberlin College or Oberlin, Oberlin University? Ober, Oberlin College uh, in 1984, 83 or 84, 1984. And uh, I wanted to do this study because one of the things that we continue to run into is that a lot of people who've been pulled into political life of different ages, uh, but who have uh, come into political life uh, just recently. Uh, over the last two years or so, uh, as a consequence of young people rising up, young working class people rising up and fighting the state um, in Ferguson, Missouri, uh, on August 9th, 19, on August 9th, uh, 2014, after the police murder of 18 uh, year old Mike Brown. Uh, and people uh, have jumped in uh, enthusiastically, many people wanting to do uh, something to change things. And uh, this was the beginning of their political life. And many people have no history, political history before that time. And many people have no experience in organization, trying to organize. And many people don't even respect the, uh, the, the question of organization. And uh, what has transpired over the last two generations or more subsequent to the United States government murdering leaders like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and destroying the Black Panther Party as a part of a really coordinated uh, kind of uh, program, uh, we have uh, uh, people who uh, participate in what might otherwise be called political life um, in front of computers. Uh, many of them are uh, social media militants. And while uh, it is really important for any revolutionary movement to take advantage of uh, the technology as it exists and as it is unfolding. Uh, it is really important for us to understand that we're not going to make a revolution from uh, behind a computer screen. And I think it's also important to understand that uh, most people coming into political life don't come into political life to make a revolution. Uh, they come into political life because they're upset uh, by police doing to us. They are upset because how, quote unquote, black people are being treated, uh, but with no uh, uh, history of a, a, no, a political uh, organization, political struggle, political movement, uh, nothing, uh, no theory of their own uh, that can be used to combat uh, the theory, uh, the ideology, or the ideas uh, that support the system uh, that oppresses us. And when you don't have your own uh, theory, uh, what you do is end up borrowing theory from your oppressors. That's why one of the things that you see by you know many of the rap artists, uh, they get their political education from cartoons or from uh, from movies. You know, they're Scarface, and, and there are all of these other kinds of things that have been movies and. And sometimes uh, the most outlandish movie uh, is uh, some gangster. And that becomes a model for behavior because the gangster seems to be against the system. That's where the whole idea of thugs and thug lives come from, uh, et cetera. That's the absence of uh, political philosophy, revolutionary theory uh, to guide a movement. So I wanted to use this old study and it's rather long. I, I always hope that people read uh, uh, the studies when we get them. I should know better uh, because nobody reads today. I mean, uh, people who work with uh, social media and videos and stuff, YouTube says, gotta, if you can't do it within six minutes, forget it. You know what I mean? So uh, attention spans and things like that have deteriorated seriously. But I really would hope people would read because much of what you need to know uh, is, is in books. Uh, and so I want to look at this question, the task of revolutionaries in the history of the movement. And I'll read a lot. And so you don't have to do it at this moment, but I hope you will have read and I hope that I can 
spark interest uh, that will uh, convince you that this is something that you should read. Again, this was a speech that was made to uh, African students, black students, uh, at Oberlin College in 1984. Uh, I was on tour in Ohio, and Oberlin is in Ohio, Ohio, and I had an opportunity to speak to these young people there. And so um, the presentation, the, the, the piece is written um, as the presentation that it was. So Uhuru, we always start our events and programs with the word Uhuru. In fact, uh, should you meet us on the street, that is probably how we would greet you. Should to understand that we have to struggle as a whole people. I'd like to express our deepest appreciation for being able to be here with you tonight. When I say we have to struggle as a whole people, that challenges the idea that somehow there is some individual solution uh, for us uh, as a people, that somehow we are trying to solve some American problem, uh, something to that effect, when reality is that we uh, came into this situation that we're confronted with as a people, and there's not going to be any way out of it except as a people. And that's despite the fact that uh, what the government and the country will always attempt to do is to um, provide a solution for individuals, uh, while uh, and, the, and, the, and the country will allow individuals to be quite successful, but they won't let the group be successful. And so we're saying that uh, an individual can be successful, but it uses this at the expense of the group. And we're not about finding individual success for anybody. Uh, Barack Hussein Obama is successful, but he's successful at the expense of the whole African population. And I don't think uh, you've got all these African people who uh, uh, went out and worked for Obama just to get one Negro a job. That's a tremendous amount of energy uh, that we would be using uh, just to get one job for one Negro. Uh, the thing is that we, we supported Obama, those who did, uh, because they thought it was going to be good for the whole people, not just good for Obama, his wife, and other children. There was an assumption that it was going to raise up the whole people, not just Obama. Um, and we get upset when people say bad things about Obama, not because they said it about him because it's a reflection, we think, on us, that when they attack Obama, they're attacking black people, not just the Negro there, because African individuals get attacked all the time. And uh, generally speaking, we don't, uh, we don't assume that uh, it's just an attack uh, on the people, uh, but it is an attack when, uh, on the people when you look at the conditions of African people. And here you got an African like Obama who doesn't live like any of us, uh, uh, he tries to walk like you. Uh, he, you know, uh, tries to dribble basketball like you. Uh, he may even like some of the same music you like. Might even be able to sing some of the same music that you sing. Uh, but his life is entirely different from, from ours. And he expects different treatment uh, and for himself. Uh, and he expects that at the expense of the rest of us. His children don't go to the schools that your children go to. And uh, uh, because they don't have the experience.